uh, deep pocketed dollars for commercial off the shelf test automation solutions. Today's uh, world where the likes of Selenium co integrated with uh, the agile and DevOps models offer unmatched speed with extreme amount of uh, uh, options to accelerate your software testing. So at Gallup, we've always been on the constant forefront of bringing innovative thinking to quality engineering. While today's webinar is also about demonstrating a proprietary, successful, world-class IP platform that we have built, leveraging our proven expertise in test asset migration. Migrating to Selenium today uh, is a reality with Gallup Solution. Uh, we would have one of our global innovation thought leaders demonstrate that, discuss about the aspects of costs involved in such engaging aspects of work, what could be the technical challenges, and the various options available. While I, while I do that, let me also introduce a little bit about Gallup as an organization. Gallup today is a world-class uh, software testing, independent software testing services organization. It's the number one testing services company, independent testing services company of North America, subsidiary of uh, Signity Technologies, the world's second largest independent testing services company. At the heart of Gallup uh, is its ability to instill global testing thought leadership. Over the period of time, we have had the privilege of working with uh, lots and lots of global 2000 companies, uh, with close to 500 companies that we have served over the last decade and a half as a group. We have been working with more than 50 of global 2000 companies and 35 of Fortune 500 organizations. As a company, we bring in an unanimous uh, unparalleled workforce of more than 2,000 software carrier testers to play. And one of our key focus that we bring in is our impeccable approach towards software testing automation. Global analysts from Gartner, the Foresters, Nelson Halls, and Everest Research have constantly commented and endorsed the thought leadership that we as an organization have been demonstrating, which has consistently put us into the magic quadrants and the Nelson Halls leader charts. Everest Research also rated us as superstar with best-in-class buyer satisfaction, which kind of shows the perennial, undisputed client focus that we bring in. Having said all of that, one of the most important areas of focus for us is to build and roll out intellectual property that accelerates the entire software testing life cycle. More so in the age of digital enterprises, we have a world-class quality engineering testing engineering thought leadership that is backed by constant focus towards R&D, world-class labs, and approach towards ensuring impeccable software test automation. At the heart of it today, I would like to introduce Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh is the Associate Vice President for Global Delivery, heads the technology practices at, at Gallup Solutions, also heads our innovation practices. Over the last 17 and a half years, Rajesh has been helping transform global clients in terms of their complex software engineering, quality engineering practices. Uh, he specializes more so in very complex areas of performance engineering, security testing, and drives all our new age automation IP platform development. A technical speaker par excellence also comes across with patents on his name and brings up across global diverse experience of having worked with global fortune organizations ranging from Accenture, App Labs, Virtusa, and Barn. At Signity and Gallup, Rajesh spearheads all our IP strategic initiatives, also globally heads our test asset migration practice, and kind of uh, champion of the open source innovation. And with a master's degree in applied electronics, Rajesh's innovation is a hallmark of what we, we kind of get back to the community. Without delaying further, I would like to hand it over to Rajesh, and let's look forward for what looks to be a technically very, very fulfilling webinar that I'm sure will fulfill the quench of your thirst towards leveraging the advantage of Selenium. How do you migrate there and how do you take advantage for that, for that of your test automation strategies? Over to you, Rajesh. Thank you, Sairam. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, to, to all the practitioners out there. Uh, thanks for the introduction, uh, Sairam. So, over the last um, decade or so, Gallup, Gallup has been known for uh, its innovation 
and specifically in the space of migration tools like WinQuick, uh, which helps our clients to move from legacy WinRunner test assets to uh, HP uh, suits in terms of quick, uh, quick test probes. So based on this, um, we've developed a solution which is a unique platform which can help us migrate uh, test assets from one test platform to the other. So that's the uh, IP solution which we had um, envisaged. And today, particularly in focus, uh, we would talk about migrating uh, HP suit to Serenium. And uh, uh, we'll also dive deep into uh, what would be the need or drivers for migration, what sort of challenges you might face, uh, what could be your strategy to adopt? We'll give a sneak preview of what Migrate to Selenium as a platform can do and what's the value you would uh, get out of the uh, solution and uh, how do you drive it in terms of using this service and what can it really benefit. And finally, we will do a demo of the solution uh, which will help you to uh, which will help you to envisage uh, how this is instantiated in, in a specific project if you would like to. So w with that said, I will, um, I, I will sort of detail out the context and then we'll go into the solution. So before we jump into the uh, uh, before we jump into uh, the details of the context, we would like to get a sense of uh, the practitioner's view of what would be your development methodology as you practice, uh, what's the common themes, is it agile, DevOps, or the traditional waterfall, just get a sense of how the audience is split and what they are trying to attempt. So we'll give a couple of seconds, I think we're seeing 70% of the audience have uh, voted. Okay, I think uh, we've got a fair amount of um, uh, votes and not surprisingly uh, with a 80-20 sort of a rule, we have seen a lot of um, lot of votes for Agile and, and that's also the reason um, why we uh, why we have this uh, webinar. Uh, we see a lot of transformation from the development methodology with its traditional waterfall um, uh, to Agile. And that is also driving a lot of adoption of moving away from the traditional platforms which used to support waterfall uh, to, uh, to a more Agile and DevOps sort of adoption. So just to give you a sense, uh, we had 80% of uh, the overall audience and then if we 80% of the of that population voting for Agile, which means that uh, the need of the hour is to have a tool which can uh, help us drive more automation, more test coverage, which can uh, which can get us more ROI in terms of what, uh, in terms of automation. So, so why do we migrate? Uh, you have a traditional asset um, in terms of UFT and what, what could be the drivers. One of the reasons why we wanted to understand where we are heading in terms of the methodology uh, with 
with the adoption of agile being in the mainstay, we see that there is a need for dev and test teams to collaborate. And reuse of test assets across dev and test teams is the need of the hour. We don't want to have test assets which can be siloed. Either the dev team use a set of test scripts um, or the test team just have a siloed version. We need a lot of collaboration in an agile sort of setup. And that's that's also driving the decisions in terms of what tools you need to adopt. Uh, integration with the development stack. So the more you want to shift early in the life cycle from a testing standpoint and the early need of the hour to use test assets which are being developed by either your SDEX or your test teams which needs to uh, find place in terms of your acceptance test or your build verification test, smoke test. So if you need to really have test assets which need to integrate with your development version control system, build system, so that you don't have to invest in tools uh, for two different uh, teams. Integration with your continuous integration framework tools, this is the need of the R and and by adopting Agile and DevOps practices, you need a tool which can help you support this, uh, leverage the collaboration which is required and you don't have to uh, focus on just having two silos. And we also know that the application architectures are much more componentized. And what that essentially means is you, you need tooling which can help you cut across uh, the landscape of uh, the application stack and you also need an extensible test architecture which can help you to either enhance or customize. So you have a tool A unless it provides you the ability to expand its capabilities uh, as and when the new set of tools and technologies are being upgraded from an application standpoint you would have to get stuck with such a tool which will not be able to sort of expand. So one of the real needs of the R is ability to extend your current capabilities either by using additional libraries which can then expand your test coverage is the need of the R. And we see that uh, the traditional tools which are in the market um, definitely have a lot of capabilities as we speak but then getting along with the new development methodologies and application architectures. The test architecture also needs to support such a, uh, such a dimension. And what, what Selenium allows you to do is to precisely help you achieve that. Uh, a collaboration, ability to integrate the entire life cycle from a tooling standpoint. Uh, there are plugins which are available which can help you integrate with your CI framework so that you can, once your test is done, you will be able to report back. So we feel that by migrating to a tool like Selenium, which is a open source and you have the power and ability to expand by extending these libraries, you will be able to build out a test architecture which is which is in line with your goals from, from an automation standpoint, ability to increase your automation coverage so that you are able to sort of get to the next level from an automation standpoint and also expand the test coverage. So these are the key drivers and each, con each organization will have a context and that could be one of the key driving force from a, from a selection standpoint. But I think uh, as we speak, we see a lot of clients adopting these approaches and from a, from a practitioner standpoint, even when we did the poll, we see a lot of adoption of agile practices and we see uh, this is going to be mainstay. So moving on, uh, we understood that Selenium could be one of the choices uh, from, there, there could be multiple tools out there. Um, this is a popular tool out uh, with which has seen for the last decade rapid adoption um, just because of the focus from the open source community. 
um, and any any change is going to be a challenge and uh, Gallup as an organization has been able to help our clients to transform um, build build scalable test platforms for them so that they can uh, really harness the capabilities of the testing tools and and that's also one of the drivers why we chose to build out a platform. So when when we talk to our clients, the biggest challenge uh, when they are doing this transformation journey is to first understand what they where they are today and where they want to migrate in terms of the as is to the to be. And from an application architecture standpoint, ability to envisage uh, whether whether Selenium would be the right fit or any other tool uh, would be the right fit. So trying to draw the enterprise strategy from an automation standpoint is going to be critical. Once you have the blueprint, you will be able to make the choices whether to migrate to a specific tool or, or a set of tools. So this is going to be critical. And if you have to go down the path of implementing um, uh, a transformation which will be from your legacy test automation tools. Putting that in place is the only way to uh, sort of strategize and get to the next level. Uh, because we have seen uh, whenever there's the choice of migration um, occurs from, from an overarching standpoint to migrate to a tool, there is some amount of inertia and, uh, with, uh, with the teams to stay put with what we have currently and sort of tweak and do something uh, which is more focused on that specific problem. Unless you take a step back and draw out the enterprise-wide architecture to understand how my test assets will be used, not only just by the testing teams, but by the entire, uh, by the entire teams inside the Agile framework and how we can build quality early in the life cycle. This is this is not just the topic of just the focus of topic of testing teams, uh, but the entire team uh, ranging from ops to dev uh, to the testing team. So this is going to be critical aspect, and the need of the hour is to understand the entire landscape. So once you decide um, after doing either a pilot or making sure that you you made a decision, the next step is to migrate the existing test assets. And uh, this, this specific activity uh, is what we are focused on uh, in terms of helping you as a practitioner or an enterprise client where you made a decision to move from a tool A to tool B. Uh, Gallup has a uh, out of the box solution which can help you do that. And uh, we will sort of deep dive on, on some of its features and, and talk about uh, how we have achieved for other clients and what value did we bring. So in terms of once the test suit is available, it, it's being transformed to the latest technology and tooling which you would uh, eventually do. What we have also seen is not just this transformation of getting an enterprise-wide framework, but it, it is very critical for us to institutionalize uh, there is a legacy which we are transforming. So a lot of training happens. You need to develop methods which can help you be successful uh, and and also ensure that change management happens so that the collaboration is at the highest. So it's not going to be um, just a case in a point, but you need to apply to multiple teams um, so that you can leverage the enterprise-wide framework. So these are best practices which we have seen in multitude transformation challenges when we move from a test tool A to test tool B. Um, there's a lot of legacy, there's a lot of coding practices, there is a lot of thinking which should have happen while we develop the test automation tools. All that needs to be sort of realigned so that you can uh, really get um, the ROI which you would expect from this transformation. So what's the platform about? So Migrate to Selenium is part of the uh, overarching platform um, at Gallup, 
which is uh, migrate. And what we have done here is we made it completely tool independent. Uh, we've got this solution which can help you sort of cater to multiple design patterns. Uh, it can work with different object repository styles. Can integrate with your uh, QC slash ALM. Um, it can also work with multiple browsers. So once the migration platform is instantiated, uh, we will be able to transition from the legacy platform. Um, in, in this case, we are talking about say HP as an example. HP UFT as an example. We would move the test assets from HP solution uh, to uh, to Selenium. And uh, so we make this completely seamless in terms of how we would do this. Um, and we will sort of give you a little bit more details about how we achieve. So in terms of value proposition, um, we've been um, working on the overarching platform. Uh, it can basically help you if you need to do it manually, uh, you need to have a lot of knowledge and detail about the legacy test suite, how it was built. Uh, so the time it takes, um, the, the cost as a driver. So what this platform helps you to do is in terms of it can get you a quality test asset output um, much faster, cheaper, and better. Uh, you also patented this specific algorithm in terms of how it is done. So it helps you to not only just get your test assets migrated uh, from one platform to the other, but it also takes into account of all the best practices, um, making it easy to maintain, making it reusable. So some of the characteristics of a test automation uh, suit which we would want to imbibe um, the Gallup framework allows you to do that. And uh, that, that's what we, we end up helping you to modernize your test automation suit. So the idea is not to just uh, lift and drop uh, from platform A to the target platform, but also help you to make it one of the best so that we will be able to uh, scale up uh, when we sort of leave from this team. So that's the value we would uh, deliver. And this comes in the form of a service. And I will give you a little bit more detail about how we do that. <coughs> Understand from the audience, if there is a legacy suit uh, which you would have from a HP standpoint, what would that be in the form of framework and design patterns which you would have? We have a definitely engaging audience today. So we'll give it a few more seconds. Good. So I think um, what, what we have seen is uh, majority of uh, the legacy is, um, is, I would say, in the hybrid framework, and um, uh, and and that's also what we have seen. So, not a traditional functional decomposition, uh, unless there has been a need for uh, a business analyst or, or a non-technical uh, test engineer to contribute to test automation. Uh, from from the terms of migration we have done from uh, winner to to QTP and then from my from uh, UFT to selenium and other sort of tools uh, it has been more a hybrid framework where uh, we have seen most of what the practitioners and the clients have created so uh, just to let you know 
uh, as as we described, we are not tied into what sort of framework uh, which we have as as the source. Um, we we have a unique uh, methodology to understand what's being created and uh, using the algorithms and parsers, we sort of understand what's there and then transform. So we'll give a sneak preview of how we do that. So uh, typically, we generally been asked, um, this, is this tool available uh, for a download which I can sort of pull and then do that? So we're not traditional tool vendors. Uh, we don't, we basically offer this as a service. So when we do that, uh, basically we go in a structured uh, approach. Uh, a, we start off with understanding what's the size of the test suite. We have utilities to understand and profile the test uh, assets. Uh, once we have done with a sort of assessment, um, we collect uh, metrics and then sort of get a plan and schedule uh, and, and make sure that uh, we agree to a criteria. Typically what we have seen is there are scripts out there uh, in the legacy, probably they are outdated. So when we transform from uh, test from a source then when you want to migrate to a new platform, we could do that, but then the scripts are stale, they, they probably don't work, so we might have to refactor. Um, the other reason being uh, there are some constructs in the target platform, probably we, we will not be able to transition. Um, just to give you a sense of if uh, we are moving from uh, loosely typed language to a strongly typed language like Java, uh, when you move from VBScript, probably there are situations in which we might have to do a manual intervention. So typically we would uh, use the platform to sort of migrate, refactor, uh, if there are any issues we fix them. Then when we, uh, once we are done with that, we execute the script, make sure that it works in the uh, target platform, helps us um, give us the confidence back and say, okay, we did trans transform from tool A to tool B uh, and we are still intact. We are able to do whatever we were able to do in the tool A, but continue to uh, execute and give you the latest platform and then we uh, sign off. So that's the uh, four-step approach. So A, we've done this as a service. Uh, we take inputs, formalize, uh, do an estimate, plan, schedule, and then uh, some amount of manual intervention. Then we ensure that we execute uh, and get the scripts running in shape, transition, um, and then um, we, we move on. So that, those are the four key steps uh, which we have done. So one more poll. So the number of scripts um, you have in terms of the repository. So we see some interesting numbers. Thirty percent of the audience say they have um, thousand to five thousand, and sixty percent less than thousand. So, as I sort of described, what we have done uh, at Gallup, uh, we've taken our own clients. As, as an example, and then some of the clients which we have worked exclusively um, from a migration standpoint. You've seen that um, we've taken stats around what's the lines of code. Um, so I did mention about we do it faster uh, in, in shorter duration and, and from a cost, uh, we will be able to provide value and cost effective. But I think most importantly, 
what you have seen is uh, with minimal sort of knowledge transition and give you the business as usual. So you continue to do what you do, um, but uh, we help you do this transition in terms of this. Case. So uh, you don't, you almost have like a black box. You give us these scripts. Uh, we would help. We will work with your team. Um, we run through the process of uh, of from migrating and then refactoring all of that completely. I would say hands off approach, and then we come and execute the scripts. So that's how we plan. So not not just the speed at which we would be able to deliver, uh, but also uh, not not worry you too much in terms of involvement. So we will be able to do that uh, because A, because we understand how the test automation world works. Um, we bring in expert to ensure that uh, we will be able to execute the project and then transition. So that's, that's the sort of USP behind the approach of how we do this. So um, <coughs> what I would do uh, now is to show you the capabilities of the solution, how we do that, uh, and for that I would ask uh, my colleague Moshe to over to you, Moshe. Thanks, Ajish. Hello everyone, uh, this is Moshe and uh, I'm part of the innovation team uh, at Gallup and uh, one among the many innovations that we've been able to deliver is uh, migration, migrate to Selenium. Uh, <coughs> as Rajesh mentioned, this is, uh, this is uh, a, a, a platform which basically helps you migrate from uh, any solution, uh, any functional test tool today you could have in your, uh, in your organization to sell in it. So uh, you, you could also have an enterprise which has disparate uh, applications, uh, which is most likely the case in, in many organizations, enterprise organizations, and you want to uh, you want to standardize on an open source and, and the likes of it. So uh, we have the solution here, we bring the solution to your doorstep uh, with the with migrate to sell in it. So uh, what you see on your screen is, is, is the solution. Uh, this is, uh, as Rajesh mentioned, this is a service that we offer. Uh, and uh, all that we ask of you is your EFT uh, test assets, which is basically the combination of your uh, test scripts, the reusable libraries, the uh, object repositories, and the likes of it. And we will give you the migrated uh, equivalents in Selenium. Okay. So uh, I will launch the solution. So what you see is is uh, you will actually see three different sections in here: uh, the index page, uh, the uh, the actual transactional page in the middle, and the story builders uh, on your right. And like I mentioned, it basically provides uh, options to migrate from multiple solutions uh, to Selenium, uh, but we will focus in this demo to migrate from EFT. Uh, EFT here, I don't really mean EFT alone. Uh, this solution is a version agnostic solution uh, with respect to EFT, so you could have used any of the uh, historic versions of QTP or uh, EFT, so you could have begun using QTP begun your uh, framework development using QTP 7 or anything older than, later than that, and then are currently using EFT 12 or, or something like that. Uh, uh, this mix of versions of EFT QTP doesn't bother us. We, our platform uh, will is uh, intelligent enough to identify and migrate those assets for you. So I'll select EFT. So as soon as you select, you will notice that uh, my story builder says uh, my migration path is from EFT to Selenium. And then it basically asks uh, in the next, uh, the source of the scripts. 
the source of the scripts will be in my file system or in or in QC uh, or in any uh, test management solution. We have the ability to take a copy of that, download it as a working copy, and then uh, put it into our file system and then migrate those effects. So I will basically. Uh, I'm using this ever uh, present, ever famous uh, HP Splice application, which is basically a combination of uh, multiple QSL files, VBS, and uh, MTS files. So these are the only types of uh, uh, scripts that are present in EFT. Uh, so I want to migrate the QSL, VBS, and the MTS files in here and then move on so when i move on it will basically tells me it basically tells me that there are five files which are selected three mts and then two cfl it didn't find any vbs or text files in there uh, next it goes on in the same folder it wants to ident it will identify the object repositories it will list down both the shared and the op local repositories uh, i am uh, for this demo i will uh, use the shared repositories as migration uh, target color. Uh, in, a in, in many scenarios, we've noticed uh, they don't use object repositories. They use uh, descriptive programming. In that case, we basically skip this particular step and move on, okay, but not in mine. Okay. So I finally come to the target phase where uh, it asks me a couple of questions. The first one is the project name. Uh, so the, I can actually give any project name in here, and I want to migrate to any path for that. Then this particular path is pasted in here. So this will be my target folder where my migrated assets will be stored. And this is the project name. Please remember it's selenium underscore webinar for both of them. Okay. And uh, as of now, we have the migration paths for C Sharp and Java. Uh, that doesn't limit us because, like I mentioned, this is a, a, a platform and not a tool. And the platform basically uh, has easy plugins to provide migration paths to my, all the languages that Selenium uh, can be scripted in. So we can move to say Java J unit. Okay. And then we are good to go now. So you could also, before just converting, you want to do a final compile, uh, confirmation of what you are migrating. These are the scripts that are basically the entire files that are migrating. You want to take a look at the library files that you're migrating and the object repositories. These are the two shared repositories that we are migrating. It also gives you a summary of uh, how many scripts, how many repositories, what are total lines of code and the likes of it. And we are good to go. I have just clicked on the convert button and we, our bots have gotten to work. So the migration process is a two-step process. We have a pre-processing and the actual migration. The pre-processing is basically gathering system requirements, setting up uh, and gathering the scripts to object repository mapping and relationships and the likes of it. And uh, post that, we will do uh, the solution or the tool will uh, start the actual migration itself. So uh, it's not as slow as you think it is. It's actually much, much faster. So even before I could complete my statement, we've completed the migration uh, in fact. OK, so uh, if you notice, I had, what, 220, 250, and 350, close to 350 lines of code uh, migrated in, in just 
a minute or so. So, in fact, uh, we've, we've been, we've clocked to have migrated uh, a framework, uh, a hybrid framework actually, to uh, which consisted of uh, close to 1.8 million lines of code in under four hours. So, uh, that's the kind of migration we do. And that's the speed of the migration uh, we, we have uh, uh, done in the past. And uh, not to also mention here, so uh, in this webinar, we'll actually uh, look at the happy part, but we, we basically have the ability to migrate close to 80 to 85% of your code. The remainder of the 15 to 20% is something that needs to be done as part of manual refactoring. This is basically because we are migrating from a, a, a programming, uh, from a scripting language, which is basically provides you much more leniency. Uh, to a tightly coupled uh, programming language like Java or C Sharp. So, uh, you have some limitations uh, from the language perspective which needs to be done or overcome manually. And it also needs to be, uh, it, the manufacturing also includes handling some of the uh, HP related, uh, HP proprietary utilities, uh, checkpoints and recovery scenarios are some of the classic examples. So uh, quickly, I'll open the so I open the destination, and we have the path selected. This is where we so I said Selenium webinar is the output folder, and Selenium webinar underscore webinar is the project that we created. So I'll open it in Selenium uh, in Eclipse. This is our migrated Selenium script. So this is our class file. This is our the other class file, and this is the actual script that has been migrated. This is the empty script. And these, the ones uh, above and below are the uh, QFL files from EFT. I'm good to execute this DNA test. DNA test. So we've uh, we just we just noticed witnessed uh, uh, EFT script that was migrated to Selenium, and we also just not witnessed uh, it, this Selenium script being executed without any changes done manually. So, uh, like I mentioned, this is the happy part. We uh, but uh, uh, not necessarily the path that is taken all the time. There will be some amount of manual interventions, changes that needs to be done. So uh, with that, uh, the demo is comes to an end, and I can hand over uh, the uh, uh, presentership to Rajesh again. Uh, 
Ja, så så det ud. Okay, thanks, um, Moshe. So, if you have any questions, uh, you can type, and, and then we'll spend some time in in Q and A. Okay, so. The, the first question is how is it reusable end to end uh, in terms of UI um, from an automation tester uh, standpoint which could be reused. So uh, specific examples in terms of how we have done um, in the past if we had uh, the REST API calls we have used specific libraries to kick start or, or call the REST API or a web services call using uh, multiple frameworks like HTTP unit or or any of these libraries which we could sort of put in the Selenium script to to do those actions and then uh, again change the entire content dynamically and then verify. So there are there are opportunities where you could sort of pull this uh, test scripts together and then sort of reuse uh, some of the scripts which have been created by the developers themselves. So that is something uh, which we have seen in some of the client situations where we have uh, got the um, uh, got, got the script running uh, which was working for a developer, reuse them in the end-to-end -end sort of functionality inside the UI if you wanted to do some specific checks, if you want to do some variations and things like that. So that's, that's a possibility. Um, the second question I've seen um, is, uh, is the tool available in public? Um, so as I mentioned, um, this is not a tool offering. This is more a service offering. Uh, what we could do is we will be able to do a simple pilot with you. Uh, if you send us a set of scripts, we with uh, which are closed and some specific libraries associated so that you can do an end-to-end -end flow. So this is more uh, an offering um, via the service and we will use this tool to enable the overall um, test execution and, and then we can also showcase how did it move from um, sort of source platform to the target platform. So in terms of um, um, showing about uh, code examples uh, versus source versus target, um, we'll be able to do that. Um, we'll see if there are any other questions because I have to. So in terms of, uh, there's one more question before I transfer to Moshe so that he could uh, show it as a set of examples. Um, the test data it's again, as I said, it's the choice which we need to make. Uh, the framework will allow you to, um, the platform will allow you to either read from uh, CSV file, Excel, DB. Uh, so we have built reusable libraries uh, just in case if the current um, test suit once has been using CSV file, now you want to get into a database, um, Gallup will give you the framework so that you could uh, read from your database. So it's completely flexible. Okay, so let me transfer, make Moshe the presenter. So the question Moshe is um, <coughs> some code examples of what what's there in uh, UFT and how did it transform? Yeah, so, so uh, what I can do is I can show you uh, my source scripts. If 
you remember, uh, we went to webinar and I selected flights application and I had my scripts in here. This is my script. I could actually open it in QTP, but that's going to take some time. But those who have been there, done that with QTP or UFT should know that this is a QTP UFT script. Right? So, and then uh, we just saw the migrated, uh, the same similar script which has been migrated and uh, executed as well. This is the sample script. What I'll also do, which will give you a more uh, better view, is uh, open up one of our reports and show this. So if you notice here, this is my script, which is my input script, which is the EFT VB script. And then this is my converted Selenium Java code for the same end-to-end uh, file which I put in a source. Okay. That's that's quickly answering the question. Back to you Rajesh. Okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, any questions you could reach out to marketing at gallup.net and we will be able to help you. Thank you.